so welcome back to my channel. So if you follow me on any social media, you may or may not be aware that back in July, I took the Cambridge English exam um, for level C2 and I got some requests to do sort of like a video talking about my experience and maybe giving some tips. So I thought I'd sit down a little bit and do that, talk to you about that today. So first of all, I don't know if you care to know my results, but uh, I do, like, I don't, I don't mind disclosing them, so I thought I might as well tell you. So I got an overall score of 224 out of 230. My reading was the worst of all of them, which is really ironic, because the most that I interact with English is reading, and um, I, I think that it's pretty... bad. I got a 216 for reading, which is technically grade B. Uh, I got 2.30 for use of English, 2.23 for writing, 2.30 for listening, and 2.19 for speaking. So speaking and reading are not that great. Uh, they're not bad, but both of them are grade B. And I think, just like uh, my own humble opinion, uh, that that kind of, kind of speaks to what kind of a test it is. And without trying to brag, what I mean by that is that it clearly does not... Um, accurately, I would say, assess your skills. I don't really practice grammar, I don't really practice writing essays or anything like that. Um, all I do is speak and read and I, I do well, I'm fine, I understand everything, I never uh, have any real communication issues or anything like that. So I personally don't feel like those grades accurately represent my skills and I think that that is the most important thing to remember when taking these tests, that they're only able to give you an approximation of your ability. Tests like this are always standardized, so they always have very strict criteria. Oftentimes, for all of the categories, um, they have things that they look out for, very specific words, for example, that you're using. They literally can only give you an approximation uh, of what you're able to do at your very best. If you think about it, the speaking exam lasts all of five minutes, if at all, and you're not speaking like 100% of that time. You have the person who's testing you speaking, you have your speaking partner speaking, um, you have time to think, so the actual net amount of time that you are speaking and are given an opportunity to showcase what you can do is very, very small. And you are then forced to sort of perform as best as you can and to use as many like fancy words as you can throw at them uh, in, in a really short amount of time even if it doesn't necessarily sound very natural and that I think is something um, that some people might struggle with and that I certainly struggled with um, because when I was hearing myself speak uh, I thought I was being very uh, <laughs> not conceited but like just so over the top fancy and formal, like just trying to use as many big words as I possibly could to appease the teachers or like the, the testers, but like that I would never use in that situation otherwise. And uh, I think it can create a very unnatural atmosphere and for someone who is very, um, very used to speaking English on like a daily basis and in normal situations, I think people like that might have real issues. Um, having those conversations and like performing at such a level in these situations because they're not natural. So I just recorded this entire video and then realized that my memory card had been full for like half of it and it just like really wouldn't tell me. So here we go again. I'm sorry that now maybe this like frame is different. I have to apologize. It's my fault. Moving on. The main point to remember is that here you're not really studying English, you're studying English specifically for this test. And for this I definitely recommend checking out all of the online materials that have been uploaded on the Cambridge um, Certificate website for this. There are sample tests um, for all categories that you can do and they're really helpful. And also I recommend just doing a quick Google search for further materials. There's a lot of um, neat websites that have like um, helpful tips on how to write essays, um, like sample essay questions on just like one-on-one -on -one tips on like how to do it. There's even a website where you can send in your own essays and maybe they will correct it for you, which is pretty cool. I actually think that the writing portion is the, definitely the most difficult out of all of the compounds because 
they want such specific things from you and they want like the the style of text needs to be the right one so whether it be letter report or whatever else is there uh they want the register to fit that style they want you to use specific words they want you to lose a lot of use not lose a lot of linking words um obviously touch on some topics that have been brought up in whatever the topic is that they put to you so there's a whole range of things that can go wrong with the writing style the writing style with the writing portion of the exam so i really recommend if your english is already pretty great to focus on that because that you don't you won't probably just know this stuff another tricky part i would say is the speaking um because as i mentioned earlier you have such a limited time frame to showcase what you can do and um, there's another person there with you who's trying to do the exact same thing and like present themselves in the best light possible and there's just not enough time to really like uh, correct any mistakes you might be making so you really have to try and do your very best and there's three tips that I have for like how to do that really like the first one I think is to make sure that you are reacting to what the other person is saying so there are portions of the exam where you will be discussing among yourselves something or other and uh, definitely try and like link what you're saying to what the other person is saying to make it look and sound like a natural conversation it kind of goes along with that but make sure to just interact with him or her uh, during the conversations like ask them like oh what do you think about this what do you think about that like don't just like do your thing uh, during the time where you the two of you have to talk but like ask them engaging questions as well again to sort of make it look more and sound more natural lastly I think something that can go wrong really easily is um, one of you kind of monopolizing all the speaking time which is really hard to really control especially if the other person is someone who's like doing that and who's a very talkative and very dominant person but if that's something that you tend to do, like ramble on and on and on, try to remember that there's another person with you who's also trying to get some uh, speaking in. So don't monopolize all the speaking time, but also don't let them do all the heart heavy lifting and like you just like nodding along with it because it is a speaking exam and you do want to speak <laughs> which should go without saying really overall i personally had a pretty positive experience with this exam i took it here in vienna and it went everything went smoothly i didn't have any issues um the people were really nice i would say like it were really nice to talk to and i found that one of the girls is actually doing a master's program uh, at the university that I'm gonna do a master's program soon and in the same field so that's really cool maybe I'm gonna see her again also what I really like about this exam is that um, the results are valid as far as I know forever which isn't the case with many similar exams like for example as far as I know the IELTS is only valid for like two years or something like that which is fucking crazy like if you think about it you spend so much money you take this exam like study for it and take the exam and you prove that you are basically on the level of a native speaker and then two years later to tell you so well we think you forgot everything so you might as well do it all again that is complete bullshit i don't ever want to do that again so that's why i chose the cambridge um certificate and uh, yeah i feel like that is all i have to say i hope with this like doing this a second time now that i didn't forget anything really important let me know in the comments down below if you think i missed anything or if you have any further questions on this topic don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and click subscribe if you're new to my channel and head over here to the left where i'm gonna link you some videos that i also did that you might enjoy thank you so much for watching i will see you very soon with another video have a lovely week bye